Thanks, Dr. Campbell. Um, let's go to Wendy now. Wendy, go ahead and unmute yourself for Dr. T. Colin Campbell. Hi there. Uh, thank you so much. I did the, your course back in 2010. So my question particularly is for women that are menopausal or postmenopausal. It's suggested that we take 1200 milligrams calcium a day, which I don't, but in order to prevent brittle bones and teeth as one gets older, um, absorbable calcium, I eat tons of greens, but how much of it is absorbable? What can a woman do in order to um, make sure that they don't get brittle bones and teeth and also to balance the hormones? This is a very high carbohydrate diet and uh, I have weight, gained weight on it and we don't like that. So how can one maintain their hormones and their weight as one gets older? Thank you. Well, when you say a high carbohydrate diet, uh, that, that can be of two kinds, either the carbohydrate like refined sugars and that's not what you want. That's where a lot of weight comes from. Or you can mean the uh, carbohydrate, the complex carbohydrates in the plants uh, which is much less problematic, but you can still gain weight. I, I understand that. Um, you know, you can eat, eat too much; it's less likely. But so when I when you say high carbohydrate diet, um, I, I don't want to condemn. You know, the carbohydrate in plants, of course, that's, that's good, <clears throat> and that that helps to keep the hormones under control. We actually did quite a lot of work on that question from our Chinese cohort and some others. We had a study on breast cancer breast cancer diet in, in women in the United States at the time, one of my graduate students did that. Um, and, and I tell you what the experiences that a woman has as she enters the menopausal period is in part, and very, very much in part, of the, what she had been doing prior to that time. If she's been on a high protein, high fat diet prior to that, a typical American diet, then at that point in time, she's also been used to having fairly high circulating estrogen levels. Menopause comes, it kind of plummets pretty fast. It's just natural, it's, that's the nature, it comes down. And if it's coming off a fairly steep cliff, then the side effects are more noticeable. If they up at that point in time had been consuming a plant-based diet, the estrogen levels are later, are lower. They're more consistent with good health. And so when menopause comes, they kind of gradually go off. And people who are in that state have less problems they don't need to worry about taking calcium supplements or estrogen therapy, if you will. Uh, they can sort of ignore that. Uh, and I have uh, mostly anecdotal experience, especially talking to people in China and the women there who are living a little bit better than we are in that score. Um, and uh, I mean, if you don't, re don't remember the age at uh, men are in, West, in Western women, that's, I mean, yeah, it, it, yeah, age of America is around 11, 12 years. In China, the average age of America is 15 years. Uh, it's just, I mean, I'm sorry, the average age is 17 years with a range of 15 to 19, big difference. At the end, at the end of the reproductive period during menopause, the Chinese women, they menopause occurred around 48 years, the Western women was around 52. So the Western women on a bad diet, high protein, high fat, all that, high circulating levels of estrogen, they're circulating all through, they got a little longer, nine years longer of reproductive life. And then they finally reach menopause and they crash. You know, they're out there and they just crash. So in under those circumstances, uh, I can understand the need possibly, certainly the interest in getting some kind of therapy, the calcium to you know, protect their bones. Uh, when estrogen goes low, by the way, it, it tends to be protective of bone health. So they don't want that. And, so it's a whole nine yards. It's a combination of, of uh, getting adequate hormone up there, magnetic calcium. I can't give you a specific recipe because it depends on, and I, I couldn't anyhow be, and I, I think a, not a physician, but um, the all, all to say is that if you haven't done that and all of a sudden in menopause, you decide you want to be a, a plant, whole food plant-based diet person. Um, yeah, you may have to you know, hope, hopefully uh, get a little bit of remedy you know, for the unpleasant things because the estrogen has gotten going down so fast. And I just don't know the answer to that, except for the fact that um, plants um, come the nearest thing to 
make it right. And I think one wouldn't have to worry about that. I mean, one person, I'll tell you, Ned, tell her your name, I'm sure she wouldn't mind. Woman by the name of Ruth Heidrich, H-E-I-D-R-I-C-H, -E you can look up on Google. A woman in uh, Hawaii uh, was in the military. She got breast cancer when she was in her 40s. Uh, and then she went to more or less whole food plant based uh, to take care of the breast cancer. And lo and behold, after about 10 years, uh, she found out her bone density didn't go down at all. If anything, it went slightly up. She came and spoke at our class at Cornell University, and I know her quite well. She was at a radio station in uh, Hawaii, and uh, she's a wonderful woman, and, and uh, she'll uh, give you possibly some answers but far better than I can. That's Hydric, H E I D R I C H. Um, that's uh, the best person to talk to on that one. <laughs>